hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'll be showing you how to cut and sew a dress with a built up neckline a cut together built up collar i know this is something you would like to know more about please keep on watching and let's get started if you are yet to subscribe to my channel please hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get notified anytime i upload a new video I have a crepe fabric here and it is about 1.5 yards. It is very stretchy. For this style, I would advise that you have at least 2 yards. I'll start by drafting the back pattern first. I have the shoulder line, the chest line, the waist line, the hip line, the knee line and the full length of the dress. I have about 1.5 inches for zip allowance by the side of the paper. Shoulder to the chest line is 8.5 inches, shoulder to the waistline is 16 inches, to the hip line is 24 inches, to the knee line is 35 inches, and to the full length is 40 inches. I'll start by tightening the center back. On the waistline, I'll go in by 0.75 and I'll connect with a straight line to the top and bottom. I'm just trying to mark my zip allowance to be more visible with the marker. So from that point I came here by 0.75 on the waistline, I'm just going to connect to the top and bottom like you see me doing. After connecting the line, I'm just going to remark my 1.5 inches for zip allowance. So I'll mark it from the waistline all the way down and also at the top and I'll connect with a straight line. I'll go in with the shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus 0.5 inch for seam allowance. I'll mark it on the shoulder line and also on the chest line and I'll connect with a straight line. Next, I'll mark the neck width and the neck depth. I'll use a neck depth of 1 inch and a neck width of 3 inches and I'll connect with a curve. For this neck width, if you are size 8 and below, maybe size 8, 6 or size 4, I would advise that you use a neck width of 2.5 instead of the 3 inches I am using here. The next thing I'll go ahead and mark is the shoulder slant. I came down by 1 inch for the shoulder and I'll connect it to the neck width. Next, I'll go in with the bust measurements divided by 4. I'll mark it on the chest line. From the shoulder slope, I'll divide what I have left into two and get the midpoint. From that midpoint, I'll come in by 0.5 and I'll connect those three points together to form the ham hole. On the waistline, I'll go in with the waist measurements divided by four. I will add one inch allowance for that. On the hip line, I'll mark the hip measurements divided by 4. On the knee line, whatever I have on the hip line, I'll deduct one from it and that is what I'll mark on the knee line and also at the full length. I'm connecting those points together now. I'll mark the bust pan measurements divided by 2. I'll mark it on the waistline. And on the hip line, I'll go up by 1 inch, that is where I'm going to mark the nipple to nipple measurements. And also from the chest line, I'll come down by 1 inch, and that is where I'm going to mark the nipple to nipple measurements. And I'll connect those three points together with a straight line. I added 1 inch allowance for that to the waist measurements, so I'm going to go in by 0.5 on both sides of the dart leg, and I'll connect to the top and bottom like so this dress is going to have a waist joining so i'm going to separate the upper part from the lower part now so i'll cut from the waistline I have the shoulder line, the chest line, the waist line, 
the hip line, the knee line and the full length of the dress. Shoulder to the chest line is 8.5 inches, to the waist line is 18 inches, to the hip line is 26 inches, to the knee line is 37 inches and to the full length is 42 inches. You will notice a difference of 2 inches in the front and the back measurement. That is because we are going to be taking in the bust darts. You are going to leave a space of about 1 inch by the side of the paper before your starting line. Now, I will go in with the shoulder measurements divided by 2 plus 0.5 inch for seam allowance. I will mark it on the shoulder line and the chest line and I will connect with a straight line. The next thing I'm going to do is to mark the neck width and the neck depth. I'll use a neck depth of 3 inches and a neck width of 3 inches and I'll connect with a curve. I'll come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slant and I'll connect with a straight line to the neck width. I'll go in with the bust measurements divided by 4. I'll mark it on the chest line. I'll go up by 3 inches and from that 3 inches point, I'll go in by 0 0.75. I'll connect those 3 points together to form the armhole. I'll go in with the waist measurements divided by 4 on the waistline and I'll add 1 inch allowance for that. On the hip line, I'll mark the hip measurements divided by 4. On the knee line, I'll deduct 1 inch from what I have on the hip line and that is what I'm going to mark at the knee line and also at the full length. I'll connect all those points together now. From the shoulder now, I'm going to mark the bust line which is 11 inches from the shoulder. I'm just going to mark that and connect with a straight line so that we can have the bust line. I'll mark the bust pan measurement now. I'll mark it on the bust line, on the waist line, and also at the hip line. But for the hip line, I'll go up by one inches. That is where I'm going to mark the bust pan measurement which is also the nipple to nipple measurement and I'm just going to connect with a straight line. I added one inch allowance to the waist measurement. I'm going to go out by half inch on both sides of the dart leg and I'm just going to connect to the bust line and also to the hip line like so. To mark the bust dart now, on the bust line, I'll go down by two inches. That is the difference between the front and the back lengths and that is what I am marking here. I'll just connect with a straight line to the bust point. I'll separate the upper part from the lower part now because we are still going to do some alteration to the upper part of this dress. This is the down part for both the front and the back. You can see that it is matching up and by the time we take in the bust darts for the upper part, both front and the back will also match up. Now to draft the built up collar, you are going to take another piece of paper and attach it to the front pattern and hold it with a masking tape like you see me doing mine. I can still see my shoulder line so I'm just going to go in with a marker and make it visible on the tape. Now I have the shoulder line marked out now. So what I'm going to do is simple. I'm just going to bring in the back pattern and measure out what I have on the neckline of the back pattern. So bring the back pattern like this and measure what you have. But first, you're going to fold the zip allowance away from the neckline. You're not going to mark the zip allowance together. You're just going to mark what you have on the neckline minus the zip allowance. So whatever you have is what you're going to use to extend the front neckline. What I measured out for mine is 3.5 inches. So you're just going to place your tape in a slant from, from the neckline that you have on the pattern. Just place your tape 
in a slant form like so and mark out your 3.5 and you're going to use your ruler to straighten it out the next thing you're going to determine is how low you want the neck depth to be for me i marked 8 inches from the shoulder i am going to connect from the shoulder extension to the new neck depth that i marked out the next thing is to determine how wide you want the collar to be but place your tape in a slant form like you see me doing with mine and the collar width i used is two inches so just mark your two inches like you see me doing with mine you don't have to mark it all the way down mark like three points and connect from the collar width to the neck depth That is all for this front part now, I'm just going to cut it out. Yeah, I want to do a bit of adjustment to the collar. I want to reduce the curvy part on the collar. That is why I'm going in with this green marker so that you can see the changes I am making to it. You can see the line I have on the collar now. So I'm just going to trim out the part I don't want now. I am transferring the lower part to fabric now. This is the back pattern for the lower part. And I don't want a dart on the skirt part, so I'm closing the dart. I'm just going to fold the dart and hold it with a masking tape. You can decide to leave the dart and take in the dart on fabric. But for me, I don't want to take in the dart on the fabric. That is why I am closing it here. So I'm just going to hold it with a masking tape and I'm going to pin the pattern to the fabric. I'm done pinning the pattern to the fabric now. Because of the type of fabric I'm using, I'm not going to add any allowance to the side. I'm not going to add any allowance to the side because this fabric is stretchy. I'm just going to add 1.5 inches to the bottom for folding allowance at the bottom part. And also at the top, I'm just going to add half inch allowance to join into the upper parts. Please note that if you are not using a stretchy fabric like mine, Add your allowance to the side. This is the front and I've closed the dart. I'm just going to repeat the same process I did for the back. I won't be adding any allowance to the side. I'm just going to add my allowance to the top and bottom and I'll cut it out. I have transferred the upper part of the back to fabric and you can see that I didn't add any allowance to the side. I only added half inch to the top and bottom of the pattern. And now notch your dart and take note of the length of the dart you'll be taking in on fabric. I'm transferring the upper part of the front to fabric now. Guys, please ignore the joining I have on the fabric there. It is because my fabric is not enough. That's why I said you need about two yards for this style. So ignore the joining I have on the fabric there. It is because the fabric is not enough. So now I'm just cutting out what I have on the pattern and I'll add half inch to the top and bottom of the pattern. I am not adding any allowance to the side of the pattern because it is a stretchy fabric. Go ahead now and notch your darts on the fabric and take note of the length of darts you'll be taking and also notch the bust dart on fabric. I'm going to put a pin on the bust point and use my pencil to mark out the bust point so I can know exactly where the bust point is on fabric. It is important to know where your bust point is because it is going to help when you are taking in the darts. I 
I have my front and back pieces here and the first thing I'm going to do is to go back to the sewing machine and take in the bust that and the waist that. Also for the back I'm going to take in the waist that. This is after stitching the darts in place and from the bust point I left a space of 1 inch before the waist dart and a space of 1 inch before the bust dart also. So you are not going to stitch to the bust point, you are going to leave a space of 1 inch before the bust point for both the waist dart and the bust dart. So I went ahead to cut a facing for the front and I added interfacing to my facing. It is very easy to cut, just trace out what you have on the neckline and cut it out. That is exactly the way I cut out the facing. I am going to bring in the lower part of the front now so that we can attach it to the upper part. So I'm just going to place it on each other, right side facing each other and go ahead and stitch with half inch. I'm just going to join it with half inch. This is the upper part of the back and I added interfacing to the zip area. So add interfacing to the zip area so that your zip is not folding at the back. And I've also cut out my facing for the back. I'm going to set the facing aside and bring in the down parts of the back. We are going to join the down part to the upper part. For the lower part also, I added interfacing to the zip area. It is important to add interfacing to it. You can use a soft one. So now I'm just going to go ahead and join it with half inch seam allowance. This is after I was done joining the back and I'm just going to mark where my zip will start and end. So from the top part, I mark 2.5 inches. So from that 2.5 inches, I'm marking the length of the zip, which is at 20 inches. And from the bottom part, I marked out my slits, which is at 8 inches. So now, the part I'm going to stitch is from the top to that 2.5 inches. And from the 20 inches mark up to the point where I'm going to have the slits. This was after I was done stitching. And you can see the opening I have. That is where I'm going to fix my zip. I am done fixing the zip here and this is what I have. I am going to set the back aside and bring in the front now. So go ahead and join the front together. Join the collar together with your half inch seam allowance. This is after I was done joining and I went ahead to press the seam open. Now I am going to bring in the back. I am going to place the back on the table and place the front on it, right side facing each other. I am going to start by matching the shoulder together, the front and the back shoulder, match it together and pin it down. After matching the front and the back shoulder together, you are going to get, get the center back and match it to the joining you have on the collar. The joining you have on the collar and the center back, you are going to pin it together. You are going to pin all around the collar and the shoulder. You are going to pin all around the neckline so that when you go over to the sewing machine, you are just going to stitch it. So you start from one shoulder all the way around to the back neckline and to the other shoulder. You are just going to stitch with half inch seam allowance. This is after I was done stitching and I am just showing you what it looks like. So you are going to notch around the seam so that it relaxes well on the neckline. You're just going to notch close to the seam. Notch all the curvy parts so that it relaxes on the body. The same process I used to join the main fabric of both the front and the back together is what I'm also going to do to the facing of both the front and the back. So I'm going to set this aside now and bring in the facing for both the front and the back. Note that you can use a lining for this dress. You don't necessarily have to use a facing. You can also use a lining. You are just going to follow the same process. I'm going to join the front facing with half inch first. For the back facing, the zip allowance is added to the facing. I am going to mark the 1.5 inches for zip allowance and that is where I'm going to stitch. This is after I was done stitching and you can see what we have. I use the iron to press the seam flat. Where you have the joining on the back facing, you are going to place it on where you have the joining on the front facing. 
right side facing each other and you are going to pin it down so just pin it like you see me doing and make sure that on the shoulder part also you pin it together after pinning you are just going to run a stitch to secure it down just use half inch seam allowance to secure it down this is after i was done joining the facing of both the front and the back so i notched around the joining and i went ahead to iron it so now we are just going to fix it on the main fabric so you are going to place it right side facing each other and make sure that the facing of the front is at the front part and while the back is also at the back part and you are going to match all the joinings you have correctly so pin it down where you have the joining on the back match it to where you have the joining on the facing and just secure it down with a pin so you're just going to pin round the neckline and after pinning i'll go over to the sewing machine to use half inch seam allowance to stitch it round After stitching, you are going to top stitch on the facing. I have top stitch on my facing here and I'm just going to flip it back to the right side. At this point, you can decide to iron the collar. You can take it to the ironing table and iron the collar nicely so that everything stays nice and flat. You can also put hemming gum while ironing. I have not ironed my ear. I'm just showing you what it looks like after stitching. The next thing to do now is to join the sides together. So I'm flipping it back to the wrong side and I'm going to go ahead and stitch the sides together. Remember I didn't add any allowance to this part, to this fabric but I'm still going to use 0.5 inch to stitch the sides together. I can use the 0.5 or 0.75 to stitch together. It is still going to fit because it is a stretchy fabric. This is after I was done joining the sides together and this is what we have and for the down part I'm just going to aim it with 1.5 inches and the last thing for me to do on this dress is to fix in the sleeve I'm going in with a basic short sleeve you can go with any sleeve of your choice thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed this video please hit the like button leave a comment and please subscribe to my channel Please turn on your notification bell so you'll get notified anytime I upload a new video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!